Mill gave me an apron at my Sills party and made fun of my mom for being a former maid. My fiance grabbed the mic and embarrassed her, so she cried and ran out the door. So, a few weeks ago, I, 25F, got engaged to my fiance Mike, 25M, after almost 7 years of dating. I've always gotten along with his family except for his mother. My future mother-in-law, Sydney, has never been nice to me and I know the reason. She doesn't think that I come from the kind of family that she would approve of. It's as simple as that. Mike's family is quite rich and his mother is a total snob, so she has spent most of her time looking down on me whenever we have met. I have tried to be pleasant to her, but it has never mattered. So now I just keep my distance from her and so does Mike. Neither of us is very confrontational in nature, so we mostly just let things go because it's always just really petty behavior on her part and it's not worth bringing up. But a few days ago, something happened at my sister-in-law's party and I think after this, we cannot go back to pretending that everything is fine for the sake of keeping everything peaceful in the family. My future sister-in-law, Jess, just turned 21 a few days back and her father decided to throw a huge party for her. So a lot of people were invited to the party, including my mother, which is why the incident was all the more hurtful because it was quite humiliating for her. We attended the party after work, so a lot of people were already there by the time we showed up. My mother showed up a couple of minutes after we did, and once she was there, Sydney called out to me and asked me and my mother to come to her so she could introduce us to all her friends and a couple of other people. I thought that was really fishy because she was being extra sweet to me and I guess even Mike felt that, so he stood with me while we were being introduced to a lot of people we didn't know. And then, all of a sudden, Sydney told me that she wanted to officially welcome me into the family with a gift because she hadn't been able to present me with something after the engagement because it was a surprise. For a second, I honestly thought that she was going to give me something nice because maybe she was turning over a new leave and finally coming to accept me because it had been 7 years since I had been with her son. I was unfortunately disappointed because when she handed me the gift and told me to unwrap it, which I did and then, I found an apron inside it. I was really confused and it showed on my face since I'm not a very good cook and neither am I passionate about it, so I couldn't understand why she would give me an apron. And then, she clarified everything by saying that now, it was time for me to get to work because she was sure that my waitress mother must have taught me well. For context, I have been raised by a single mother and for the longest time, she had been a waitress. My father had walked out on us before I was even born and had never been part of the picture, he hadn't even sent any child support and my grandparents could afford to babysit me occasionally but they couldn't afford to take care of us financially. So my mom had to drop out of college in her final year because she just couldn't afford it and she started working odd jobs, just to be able to support the two of us. Waitressing was one of those jobs and until I was in middle school, she was a waitress. After that, she started working in sales, and that paid decently enough, so she stuck to that. My mother and I know how difficult it has been for us in the past and her struggle is not something that I'm ashamed of, it's something that I'm really, really proud of because in spite of everything, she has never let me feel like I don't have enough. I don't come from a family that has generational wealth like Mike does and I don't mind it either because I know that whatever values my mom has instilled in me, are good enough for me and I would never be ashamed of the fact that she had been a waitress in the past. But in the context of the party, I knew that Sydney's only intention was to humiliate me and my mom. So I couldn't say anything, I just froze on the spot and literally everybody else went silent as well because it was so awkward and they probably felt sorry for us. But I didn't need to worry because, Within a couple of seconds, Mike came to my rescue because he could see that my mother was on the verge of tears and I had just frozen. Unlike his mother, though, he did not intend on humiliating her in front of just a couple of people. He decided to grab the mic from the karaoke setup nearby and called attention to himself so he could propose a toast. That was distracting enough for everyone and soon enough, all eyes were on him. Then he started talking about how wonderful it was of his father to have thrown such an extravagant party for his daughter's 21st birthday and said that maybe a decade ago, his parents wouldn't even have been able to imagine throwing a party like this and it was all thanks to Sydney and her family. That was shocking for everyone, and then it got worse because he started talking about how, almost 10 years back, Sydney's parents, his grandparents, had declared bankruptcy and had started completely relying on his dad to help them get back on their feet. It had been a really difficult time for everyone and while their entire family pretend that none of this ever happened, it was the truth. He said that back then, even though my father-in-law had been doing reasonably well, running his father's business, it was still a huge task to support everyone. Especially because at the time, my father-in-law was planning on starting his own company so he could work independently, but he had to postpone that indefinitely since that would be a huge investment and because Sydney's parents were relying on him for financial support, he had to put his ambitions on hold. The biggest problem was that Sydney's parents were not even willing to compromise on their lifestyle and worst of all, they pretended like all the money that they were spending was their own. 
They had been running their own business for a really long time and the only reason they had gone bankrupt was because of their financial irresponsibility and refusal to adjust to the times, which they did not want to admit to the rest of the world so they pretended like everything was fine. And that's how nobody had any idea that it was my father-in-law who had been supporting Sydney's parents all along. She couldn't have done it herself because she got married right after college and has never worked a day in her life. She made sure that she didn't have two, so she could live the same kind of life she had been used to while staying with her parents without ever working for it. He also said that until their very last breath in the past few years, his maternal grandparents had been living off of his father's money and neither she nor anybody else ever spoke of it. The only reason he was bringing it up now was because he wanted his mother to realize how absolutely hypocritical it was to try and demean me for not coming from a financially stable background and constantly implying that I was with him for the money when she herself was no less than a gold digger. He went on to say that at least my mother had been an honest and hardworking woman and made a life for herself. Not only had she supported herself, she had also raised me and been there for her parents without any help from anyone. And Sydney on the other hand, in spite of having all the resources in the world, she and her parents still ended up relying on his father for many and that's what she's doing even now. He reminded her that if my dad decided to leave for one day, she would be left with absolutely nothing and would have to rely on alimony which she didn't even deserve because it's not like she had done a day of hard work in her life. He and his sister had been practically raised by their nannies and babysitters and all the other household chores and work were taken care of by the staff. All she had done so far was go on expensive shopping sprees with her husband's money and visit exotic locations, all thanks to her husband and his hard work. He ended his speech by saying that giving me that apron as a present for humiliate me and bringing up how my mom used to be a waitress is not the dish she thinks it is, it's honestly just a pathetic attempt to put good people down and he said that he was ashamed that she was his mother, just like she should be ashamed of her parents and herself. Just like they had left her nothing in the end, she was also going to be able to leave me absolutely nothing. As for my mom, even if she wouldn't be able to leave me anything significant financially, at least I would have all the memories of good times that I have spent with her, the values and other lessons that she has taught me and that will be more than anything that Sydney has to offer. Then, he grabbed my hand and asked my mom to accompany us, and walked out. None of us even said anything until we were in the car and then, my mom finally broke down and started thanking him. Even then, I couldn't say anything, I could only just cry because I was so happy with the way he had stood up for me and my mother, and I just knew that I had made the right decision by choosing to marry him. To be honest, I personally think it was a great day for us and when we went back home after dropping my mom at her place, he actually even apologized for not standing up to his mother earlier because he thought that if he had done so, she wouldn't have had the audacity to act like this and think that she would get away with it. But I don't blame him, if I had been in his place, even I wouldn't have wanted to pick fights with somebody I would have to see frequently, especially regarding petty things. Her attitude towards me had always been bad but it had never actually hurt me and since I never cared about it, none of us took it seriously either. Nobody could have seen something like this coming because it was just ridiculously disrespectful. Besides, I had mentioned in the beginning itself that I had always had a good relationship with the rest of his family, so his father and sister had never been a problem for me. So fighting with her would have made family dinners unnecessarily awkward for everyone, and that's why we had been avoiding it so far but now, even the rest of the family seems to be against us. Because it has been a couple of days since the party and while Sydney hasn't tried to reach out to us at all, his dad and Jess have sent us several messages and we have had a lot of heated arguments on the phone about whatever happened at the party. We later found out from Jess that because of his toast, Sydney had felt so humiliated that she had ended up sobbing hysterically and running out of the house so she could stay away from everyone for a couple of minutes right after we left. I have basically mentioned every little thing that Mike had said in his speech. As far as I can remember, I've tried to include all the details so you guys can make an informed decision about whether we are in the wrong in this situation or not. Because right now, even though Sydney is not speaking to us, my father-in-law says that the speech that had been made was completely unnecessary, and if we had been offended, we should have just left the party that instant to cool off or we should have said something to Sydney personally instead of making a public speech about things that are very personal to the family. He told us that he agreed that whatever Sydney had done had been quite messed up and he had no idea that she was planning on doing something like that because otherwise, he would have definitely tried to stop her. But after that, Mike's reaction had been a little extreme and the only reason that he thinks so is because he had a proper audience listen to him and apparently, that was taking it way too far. Jess has also told us that his mother is very upset and has been breaking down at the slightest things ever since the day of the party because she feels humiliated. Mostly because there was a great deal that Mike had said about her parents, and she thought that it was really disrespectful because both of them had passed away and it's not like they could defend themselves anymore. She also thinks that the speech was quite ungrateful because it made her sound like a terrible mother, even though everything that Mike had said was actually true. She had hardly ever been there for her children, 
and they did have a good few memories as a family, it doesn't mean that she can deny everything else. Jess also agrees that it was the truth, but she just thinks that there was no need for him to bring it up publicly like that and basically, what I'm getting from everything that his father and Jess have been fighting with us so far about is that they are only offended because Mike decided to make that speech in front of so many people. But Mike and I believe that we had put up with her stupid remark and her insinuation that I was only with Mike because I was a gold digger had gone out of hand. We had let a lot of things go in the past because we did not want to make a whole thing out of it, but some things cannot be left unanswered. And this was one of those things, so while both Mike and I do think that everything that had been mentioned in the speech had definitely been quite personal for the family, it had to be said. Also, it's not like Sydney herself had thought twice before insulting my mother and me, so we don't really feel bad for humiliating her and her parents. I think it's fair enough, but obviously, Mike's father and sister do not agree and we have been fighting about it a lot. I just want a solution to all of this and I'm really tired of going back and forth, so I'm here to ask for you guys' opinion. Are we TAs for making a speech and publicly humiliating my future mother-in-law after she tried to make fun of my mom for being a waitress in the past? Update 1, hello, Reddit. First of all, thank you so much for all the comments. A lot of you took out time to help us out and I really appreciate that. Most people were conflicted about whether we did the right thing or not, and honestly, it took us a really long time to decide how to move forward as well. In the end, after taking advice from our friends and my mom, we decided that we were going to tell Mike's father and sister that we were sorry for spilling the beans on the family and personal affairs, but we were not going to be apologizing to his mother. After all, even they had acknowledged the fact that whatever Sydney had done was incredibly messed up. We do think that we shouldn't have brought up such personal things in front of so many people and spoken about it in detail, especially since Mike's father was not comfortable with it. Whatever Sydney had done, it was not right and they did not approve of it anyway so I guess it was not necessary for us to have dragged them into our speech. For that, we were ready to apologize, but not for anything else. Mike's family has always been very nice to me, so I don't mind acknowledging the fact that maybe certain things that they did not want people to know should not have been discussed in public without their consent. Apart from that, we don't think we have anything to apologize for because so far, even Sydney hasn't apologized to us. I don't even care if she doesn't apologize to me but she definitely needs to apologize to my mother because I can understand she doesn't like me, but my mother has been nothing but kind to everyone. She has treated Mike like her own son, she did not deserve that. So far, Mike's family has always stood up for me and tried to defend me in subtle ways whenever Sydney would become a little too much to handle. And I would really expect them to do the same this time because this is when it really counts. It has been a little over a week since the incident at the party and for the past couple of days, we haven't exactly been on speaking terms with Mike's family. But in a couple of hours, we are going to send an email to them, acknowledging whatever I mentioned in this post, and then, we'll just see what they have to say about it. Anyway, now that the main thing is out of the way, I guess I would need to address some things that you guys were confused about. In the comments of my original post, I noticed that a lot of people were very confused by the fact that I was using the word we for a speech that only Mike had made. I didn't think that it would matter so I did not bother to explain, but anyway, I guess I have to explain that I don't look at us as separate entities in this situation. We are one unit here and that is why I've been using we. Now, coming to the second thing, why did Sydney's parents never start working again and why did they have to rely on my father-in-law for the rest of their lives after their business flopped? I don't think I can answer that, I had only known them for a couple of years and even then, I hadn't been particularly close to them, so I couldn't have known how they were as people. My experience with them hadn't been particularly nice anyway, since they were just like Sydney, snobbish and elitist, so they had been very curt with me. And before I could get to know them properly, both of them passed away within a few years of each other. What I did know, though, was that both of them came from rich business families and inherited a lot of money, with which they started their own company. Initially, they did really well but I guess, after a while, they started losing their touch and that's why they went bankrupt. Instead of depending on their son-in-law for a couple of years, they became totally dependent on him forever and decided that they were just never gonna work again. Nobody asked them why, so we don't know. I myself was not aware of this until the incident at the party because Mike's family doesn't really like talking about this and so, even he hasn't spoken about it before this. He explained to me that it had been drilled into his head by everyone that this was something that should not be discussed in public, so he had kept his mouth shut, even around me. I couldn't understand why he had done that, so I did not push it. So anyway, we are not really sure why Sydney's parents didn't just start working again, they probably didn't think it was necessary because as long as they had somebody to support them and they could afford their lifestyle, it didn't matter to them how they were getting that money. My father-in-law never let his in-laws find out that it had taken a toll on him initially, that he had to even put his own dreams on hold for their sake. 
so they had nothing to worry about and judging by how Sydney has turned out, I'm guessing they probably wouldn't have cared anyway. But well, that's none of my business. Update 2, so two days ago, I had posted an update here saying that Mike and I were going to send an email to his father and sister, explaining everything. You can find it all in my last update. Anyway, we did not hear from them after that until a couple of hours ago, and we have mixed feelings about what they said. Jess had written back to us on behalf of both her and her father and she told us that she could understand that things had reached a breaking point for both of us and that's why Mike had done something so extreme, but that didn't change the fact that it was still wrong. Just acknowledging it and apologizing for it half-heartedly did not make it right because now, everybody in the family knew about their drama, which they had managed to keep a secret for the longest time. They said that they could understand our position but it was still unfair for them because now, it was Mike's father and Sydney that people were all gossiping about. So in a way, they believed that Mike had just messed up his own family's reputation while trying to defend my honor or whatever. And they thought that our apology seemed pretty half-hearted, since apparently, we are just sorry that they feel bad about the situation, not that we did something like this in the first place. I don't think they have a valid point there, so I don't know how to feel about that. But the one thing that all of us can agree on is the fact that Sydney was totally wrong and even in the email, they acknowledged that. They said that they had reflected on the situation for the past couple of days and had told Sydney that she needed to apologize to us and that constantly pretending to be the victim was not going to work. And her being upset that Mike spoke about her parents like that, and called her out in public, it's just plain hypocritical because she was trying to do the exact same thing by humiliating me and my mom and for no reason other than the fact that she just didn't like us. So if she couldn't take it, she shouldn't have dished it out either. Besides, everyone knows that whatever Mike had said in his speech was true, so she can't even deny that. Now, she's not speaking to them either and she's basically completely on her own. I'm glad that they are not siding with her, but apart from that, that email is kind of confusing for us on an emotional level. Right now, Mike and I don't know how to react to it, so we think we are going to respond a couple of days later after giving it some thought. In the meantime, if anybody has any advice, they are welcome to share it with us in the comments. Thank you, guys. Update 3, Hey, Reddit. So it has been more than two weeks since we last spoke to Mike's family. In my last update, I mentioned that we had received a reply to the email that we had sent and welcomed it, we had mixed feelings about it. So we took our time and replied to them after four days, telling them that we were sorry that we had offended them by speaking about something that they did not want other people to know but we were not sorry for having done it. In case anybody finds that confusing, we meant to tell them that we were just sorry that they felt bad but we were not going to apologize for what we did. Because at some point, we had to stand up for ourselves, and if that happened at the cost of offending Mike's father and Jess, then so be it. Besides, I could understand that they wanted to keep certain things private but even if it did go out, it's not like they were being portrayed negatively. In my opinion, we had said nothing bad about them, and it had been all against Sydney, so it was fair enough. We were justified in our own right and even they were not wrong. So the only solution, that Mike and I could think of at least, was to drop this and move on. We could have just agreed to disagree but Mike's father was not happy with that. We spoke on the phone a couple of days after that email, and when we told him all of this, he got really mad and said that if we did not think that we had anything to apologize for, then he had nothing to say to us anymore. Both of us are quite disappointed by that because we had believed that he would try to move past this, but after he said that, we did not try to reach out to him again because even though we were upset, there was not much that we could say. And we were definitely not going to be apologetic for what we had done, we had to stand up for ourselves, and we are not going to back down. About two days after that, we spoke to Jess and she told us that Mike's father was very unhappy with how the situation had turned out and to add to it, even Sydney has left home so she could go and stay with her sister for a couple of days because she needs a change of scenery since apparently, everything has become way too toxic for her to handle. Nobody is too worried about that though, since we know that she's gonna come back. Even during our conversation with Jess, we thought that we would be able to patch things up with her, but she said that she would like to remain in low contact for a couple of weeks until everything has cooled off. So, well, that's what we're doing right now. It's kind of sad that his family is acting like this, but so far, he has been acting like it doesn't affect him. I know it does though and I really want them to be able to understand him, so I hope they reach back out to him as soon as possible so he doesn't have to feel this way. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Update 4, hey, so it has been over a month since my last update, and last week, his family finally reached out to him again. By his family, I'm only referring to his father and his sister because obviously, his mother is too proud to acknowledge that she has even made a mistake, but everybody in the family knows that by now, so we are dealing with it by just ignoring her. We hadn't been on speaking terms for quite some time, but then, last week, 
Mike's father just called him up and invited us over for dinner so we could talk things out. We decided to go and Sydney was there, surprisingly. She seemed just as shocked to see us as well, but as soon as she realized that it was us, she decided to make a face and leave the room. Mike's father told us to ignore her because well, what else could we have done? Anyway, after that, we had dinner with his family and his father apologized for his behavior, saying that maybe he had just been taking everything a little too seriously. He told us that he had done some serious introspection over the past couple of weeks and realized that we were right, none of us were wrong in our respective places, and the best thing that we could do to deal with the situation was just move on from it. So now, he was willing to do that because he had realized that this was just not worth losing his relationship with his son over. Besides, Mike and I are getting married soon and he wants to be involved, so this passive-aggressive silent treatment is not something that he wants to have anymore. Jess basically just seconded everything that her father said and it didn't take us much time to sort things out after that. Right now, we have talked it out, and we have decided to let bygones be bygones. The bottom line is that they want us in their lives and we want them in ours, so we are letting the past go. As for Sydney, she can do whatever she wants, it doesn't concern any of us anymore. We don't even expect an apology from her anymore, because either way she's not going to be invited to the wedding, so it doesn't make a difference. But I'm happy that we were able to make it right with the rest of his family, and I'm only just waiting to get married to Mike now.